It's Friday, the 9th of October 2020, and we come your way again with another exciting edition of Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. My name is Desmond Frimpon. In this edition, we meet a gentleman who is redefining public transport with his online car booking service. Starbucks provides a five-star service for passengers. His aim is to end the era of rickety vehicles, impatient drivers and conductors, as well as the stress involved in getting public transport. My colleague, Anastina Sewa Asante, had a jolly ride on Starbucks and brings us this report. Everyone has a story to tell after sitting in commercial vehicles, especially Trotro. The noise, the insults, petty quarrels are the most talked experience. But there's this emerging entrepreneur who has begun changing the Trotro experience. Join us as we explore this new venture on this edition of Bistec. What informed your decision to start this business? So I think it's about the quality of service that uh, we receive from Trotros. I think if, if you've traveled very, very well, you would understand that public transportation is one of the key sectors you know, of, of every economy. But in our case, uh, the quality that we receive is not the best. So I think that because of that quality, people are incentivized to, to buy cars or to drive your own cars, which is also not sustainable for the environment, you know, because the more cars you have on the, on the road, the more traffic congestions you have, um, and the, the less likely our environment is sustainable. So that was the whole idea, you know, yes. Does that mean your cars are different from the churches we pick? No, not, not different um, necessarily, but it's about service, it's about the quality of the service. Um, because, if, for example, if you look at the seats inside Troll Trolls, they are not so um, comfortable for a lot of people, you know. Um, if you look at even the in-bus experience, the experience you have inside the bus, it's not the best because the bus is not air-conditioned, for example. All of this discomfort would naturally lead you to look for alternatives. I think the only viable alternative is private car ridership, is to, is to buy your own car and drive. You know, so it's not that our buses are somewhat different or technically different, but the service, the quality of the bus is completely different from the trolls. Tro the bus is air conditioned, the seats are very comfortable, there's enough, uh, enough um, leg, leg room for passengers, so, which adds to all the comfort. Okay. So if I want to join Starbus, what are the process? You mean as a passenger? So we have an app. We have an app uh, which you can use to book your ride. Um, the, so the, the way the service works is this. Um, so there are fixed routes. Identity to Accra, for example, is a fixed route. Spintex to Accra is another fixed route. So you go to the app, you select your station. So your station could be Adenta. Um, then uh, you'd see the, the schedules from Adenta to Accra. And then you book it. You select your bus stop, your pickup bus stop. Um, and then we'll tell you when the bus will arrive at that bus stop. You, you're there on time to pick the bus, and that's it. It's, it's a very straightforward um, process. And your charging is just like that of the church or, or what? For the app-based service, it um, is between you know, 20 to 100% higher compared to the fares that the church tr charge. But we do we are experimenting currently with a different service uh, where we, we also picking passengers uh, on the streets. We are hailing them on the streets the way the trot trots do and for that the face is the same. So from Adenta to Accra, how much do you charge when I book on the app? It's seven cities. Isn't it too expensive? I think it's about quality. You know, quality it doesn't come you know cheaply. And if you want to, you want to enjoy quality, you pay for it. But there's a lot that goes into quality. Uh, I talked about for air conditioned, for example. I talked about the fact that uh, the bus leaves on schedules. What does that means is that if the bus says it would leave at 6 a.m. and there are only two people in the bus, the bus would leave at 6 a.m. exactly at 6 a.m. 
all right so that's quality so you've got to pay for quality if you want quality and people are not complaining people are very happy people are asking us to launch on many routes uh, and um, yes so people are not complaining and so far are you getting passengers um i think it's so pre-covid business was good i think that it was it was great because we're growing about at about 30 percent week over week but um, during the lockdown or during the pandemic, business has been affected significantly. What that means is that we aren't picking as many passengers as we were picking previously. And you know, because you know, people are you know, indoors, people are working from home, those are primary customer base, you know, is the white case. Um, but now I think that things are picking up you know, again and uh, we see some opportunity. So how long have you been in business? Um, for um, practically nine months now. What's the way forward? What next? Uh, for us, it's about scaling the service. Like I said, people like it, people love it, don't like it. They don't like it, they love it. And so the idea is to scale it, which is why we're experimenting with a new service now. And I, I think I talked about, about that briefly. So it's about uh, allowing passengers to hear the service offline. Okay. Yes. So can you throw more light on the offline services? So the offline service operates the way the truck trust do of the very, very huge emphasis on quality service. Quality service is about the quality of the bus that we put on the road, the service that the passenger receives inside the bus. So the bus is air-conditioned, the bus conductor and the drivers are uniformed and they are trained to treat passengers uh, in the most decent manner. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is a, the service you receive you know, whilst you, you are aboard the bus. Um, yes, so, and, and, uh, so in terms of how it works, we, we, we directly subcontract the bus to a, to a driver. And the driver determines the most appropriate route for the bus. Yes, so that, that's how it works. It's not really different from how Trot Trust operates technically, just that we have a very huge emphasis on quality. We cannot compromise quality at, it, at any given point in time. Yeah. So aside the quality, I can see your conductors also shouting for passengers or how does that work? So they hail the passengers. It's, it's, I think there's a difference. The way um, you have uh, the, uh, of, of colleagues who are the folks in the informal bus transportation network, the Trot Trust too, um, they almost harass the passengers. But we don't do that. Um, we station the bus. People, when you see quality, nobody tells you to go in for quality. When you see the bus, people are asking, ah, so where is this bus going? So the, the, the conductor then can tell you that this is going to Accra, or it's going to Circle, or it's going to, you know, Amazon Mine and so on. Then you board it, if it is going your way. Um, okay. So who are your target market? We focused on workers, so people who commute every day. Um, not every passenger is allowed to use um, the bus. So if you're smoking, for example, we will not allow you to use the bus. Um, if you're carrying load, you cannot use the bus. Uh, you know, so it's very important that, like I said, it's about quality. Anything that dilutes this quality, we don't tolerate it. But if the person has money to pay for extra seats no. to put the load on, yeah. you're not going to allow it's not that. Allowed. Wow. Even if you want to pay 10 times the money, it's not allowed. Like I said, we have to be very, very focused on quality. Quality should not be traded for anything, you know, and that, that's the operating principle of the service. Quality at all times, you know, so if you're beginning to allow people, you know, to bribe their way through the service, then it dilutes the whole idea of quality, which is why we exist in the first place. You know, when you ask, I told you that the very reason why we started this is to improve the state or the quality of the service within the intercity or intracity um, bus transportation network. So for the offline service from Accra to Osu, what would be the charge? Um, I think that would be in three cities. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure of what I'm saying, but that would be three cities or so anything around that. Mm. And the person would enjoy air condition? Yes, air condition. There, there's total tranquility in the bus because um, you know it's, it's air conditioned, so you don't have the windows open you don't have people shouting and so on. The bus conductor doesn't shout and, and all of that. Mm. So what's the difference between the 
online version and the offline service because that that amount is higher and this is way lesser. Mm. The, the online is scheduled. It's a scheduled ride. So it moves at specific times of the day, in the morning and in the evening at specific times. The offline service is on demand. And here, there's a bit of, um, of if you like, there's a bit of compromise that we have to make because we have to also do some of the things that the truck trucks do, like hailing passengers in the street, you know, which I think could be an inconvenience to some passengers. But I think that for us to scale the service, which is the next step for us, at this current time, I mean, in the context of COVID, the, the, the way forward is to, is to do a lot more off, offline trips. Okay. Mm. So instead of shouting, Kanesh, 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 in your case, how are you going to get me onto your bus? Can you demonstrate? Uh, I can demonstrate that, unfortunately. <laughs> but I think that's... <laughs> I think that uh, I think you have the opportunity <laughs> to see how that works <laughs> when we move around because okay. we'll be moving around, <laughs> and so you see that. Um, but yes, I think we do a bit of that. But the point I'm, I'm making is that <laughs> we don't harass you. You see, have you ever used truck truck before? I have, <laughs> and you see, the very moment you harass me, uh, it's it's uh, people just harass you. They come in, you know, as if you don't know where you're going. I, or I seem to possess your body. That, that is what we don't do. Because we know we are selling quality. And quality doesn't have to shout. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. How many cars and employees do you have? Well, so collectively we have 15 you know, drivers. We are contractors, by the way, not employees. Okay. Um, so, and then we have, um, we have 10 cars currently operating and then five years to go um, on, the, on the road, yes. And the route is? So we have Adenta to Accra, Spindus to Accra, Pokwase to Circle, um, Wager Junction to, to Circle as well. We have Danshoman to Circle, yes. And there are new routes that we'll be adding, like for Amasaman to Accra. Um, yeah, I think there's also Doduwa to Accra we want to add, yes. With the new offline model, there's no limit, uh, you know, as to how much we can do or how much um, area we can cover in Accra. So which routes do you ply? New routes or special routes you have? Yeah, we do have some what we call custom routes um, because again it's about quality. Quality is about meeting the customer needs. So if we take um, an area like um, East Ligon, there are, there are places where, uh, there are parts of East Ligon where truck trucks don't go and we can go there because of the custom route or the personalized service that we provide. So does that mean that your trolls are your competitors? Well, I think that the answer is yes. The answer is yes. But I think that we are, we are, we are complementing each other. You know, transportation as a service is not about competition. It's about complementarity. So if you understand it that way, uh, I think that would peacefully coexist. Look at the way taxis, and um, ride-hailing apps like Uber are currently coexisting. You know, I think there's a use case for each of them. And and uh, yes, so uh, it's, I wouldn't say it, it is a competition in, in that sense, but yes, technically competition because we are competing for the attention of people who also use Trotro. Okay. And then how do I? Or how do passengers get the app on their phone? I for you, you you have to tell them the process they have to go through. Well, so um, you go to the Google Play Store, you search for Starbucks, you download it, you sign up, and that is it. Uh, once you sign up, you see a list of stations that are available, and um, you select your 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 preferred station, and and that's it. With a mode of payment, is it weekly, monthly, or how does it work? So it is. As pay as you go. Okay, so when you use the service, then you pay and cash right now. Uh, but some people who use the service regularly, especially those who are using the app, uh, have arrangement to pay weekly. We don't do monthly or we don't accept monthly um, because we don't want to, we don't, we don't want a situation where we take the money and we are not able to provide the service. Or you are not able to use the service and you're asking for a refund. Yes. What inspired the name Starbucks? The truth is that we're thinking about how to provide a, a five-star experience. Um, that was really the, the genesis of the name, five-star experience. 
So because she was about five star and then bash, we managed to marry the two, the star and then bash. But we didn't want it to be you know, star, you know? so we decided to remove the how to omit the R and made it star bash. We want to delve into your business background. So where did you start from to get here? So I previously worked um, with, with Imani, you know Imani? Yeah. Um, so I was, um, I, was in, I was in charge of technology and communications at Imani. Um, and in 2016, I discovered an opportunity to build software for the banking industry. So we built some software for, for, for microfinance institutions and savings and loans. And during the 2008, 2018 and 19 banking crisis, we had to shut down that operation because you know, financial institutions were going out of business. And, and so we had to look for, um, or I have to look for a different opportunity um, as an entrepreneur, because I'm an entrepreneur, I'm not, um, yes, that's what I do, looking for opportunities. So, uh, and transportation was one of those, those opportunities that I discovered. So having the technological background, are you the one that designed or created the app for Starbucks? So um, we have a team, we have a team of, uh, of, of programmers, of developers who work on the app. I was not directly involved in the coding because look, as an entrepreneur, you have to be more uh, business oriented, especially in this market than you know, te technically oriented. So I, I, was I was involved in the supervision and the execution of the whole product, of the whole app, but not directly built it. And so far, what has been the ch some of the challenges? I think, for, for especially with the app, the, the challenge has been to scale it to as many people as possible. Because you have somebody, for example, who, if the person lives here and we don't have a route here, He's asking us to launch a route here. We can just do that, you know. So if we, if we don't launch a route, he's not happy. And uh, he's disappointed. The next time we have a route, or we have um, yes, a bus on his route, he's lost the interest to come or to use the service because you know, the time we wanted this, we were unavailable for him. So that's one of the key challenges, um, scaling the service um, to as many people or to on, um, on many routes as possible. The other challenge um, has been um, internal, and I think that these are challenges that are very common with, you know, for any any business. Yeah. yeah. I I want to know the internal challenges. So if you don't mind, and you want to share, I think one of the things one of the things I would call internal challenge is um, you know funding to scale the service. Um, yes, to scale the service. I think that you know, to, to scale product like you know, what we have, like Starbucks, you need substantial amount of funding to do that. So that's one of the key challenges. But well, it's common. It's a common challenge because the, the, the market is currently volatile. You know, uh, people are not investing uh, because, I mean, for good reasons. What makes your business different from the church? It's um, essentially the quality. It's essentially the quality. You know, quality is a key differentiator um, as far as um, we're concerned. See, quality and affordability. Because if you look at the offline service, for example, even though we are we we have match the truck trolls, we still charge the same fare. Yeah, so quality and affordability. So, if you want to enjoy quality service devoid of noise and quarrels amongst others, then you have to go online and then download Starbucks to enjoy this premium service. Ernestina Sawa Asante reporting for Bistec on Ghana Web TV.
Last week we learned about Loom. This week Jefferson continues the series on some internet tools that can be of help in our everyday lives on Tech Bits. <music> Hello there, my name is Jefferson Seniaja from After Music. This week on TechBits, we're going to continue our search for useful websites and tools that would help us in our everyday work of lives. And today's tool is Temp Emails. That's right. Sometimes you go on a website, you want to sign up, but you don't want to be, get too committed to the website because you're afraid that they will bombard you with marketing emails and marketing spam and all that stuff. Temp email is the way to go. We're going to dive into how we set up a temp email, how to use the temp email, and you're on your way. It's very quick to, to not get your inbox so bombarded. It keeps your personal email clean or your business email clean with less spam in there. Temp email is a great tool to have and it's very, very easy to set up. So we're going to start and get into it. Okay, so as soon as we get onto our desktop we're just on google you can just type in temp email and there are quite a lot of tools and websites that offer temp email we can just even start from the first one temp email disposable temporary email and once you get there the first on your screen your temporary email address it will generate a very, very random uh email address for you this these type of tools constantly generate uh um, emails so even when you come here the following day you might find another email so all you just do is copy this and you've copied your email address you go and place it at wherever you want to sign up temporarily to the catch is that once you are here you come scroll down and that's your inbox any new stuff that needs to uh, which needs to be on this email address it will show up in the inbox there it's constantly refreshing and constantly waiting so let's just say you've gone to sign up for a website and you just want activation just that you just go there uh, put in your temp email address which is this and you come back here and your inbox will be there it's something you can temporarily use and not need it again the disadvantage is that obviously once you use an email account you will not be able to come back and use that same email account again so make sure that it's something that you don't really need It's disposable email you also have the luxury of changing the email address even though it's auto generated so for this moment you can even say okay fine i want to change that so jefferson and you choose choose which domain you want to use your temporary email as then you save and that gives you your new temp email so jefferson at zip to zip.com that's your new temporary emails this is really good but still remember that this is temporary so once you just copy you go and paste you sign up you see your temporary inbox here and that everything here is temporary it's not a thing it's supposed to help you fight against spam advertising and everything so it's really really good tool to keep your personal and business inbox clean so that's it for this week see you again next time bye for now in business headlines this week, the aviation sector faces shutdown as staff protest encroachment of airport lands. And CEO of Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Yofi Grant, has hinted of Boeing hoping to set up in Ghana to service planes in Africa. In our first story, days after staff and union leaders of the Ghana Airport Company Limited hoisted red flags and banners at the company in demand for the removal of their managing director, Yao Kwakwa, their colleagues from the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority are also embarking on a protest over encroachment of their lands. The GCAA staff are protesting what they term grabbing of lands of the authority. They warn the country's aviation sector risk shut down if immediate steps are not taken to safeguard crucial lands for operations. 
the workers have been agitating over attempts to seed lands meant for the equipment for air traffic navigation, among other activities to private developers. About two months ago, the workers laid down their tools, prompting intervention from National Security Minister Albert Kandapa. In a statement, the union leaders of the GCAA staff argued any attempt to give away lands of the authority will gravely affect the country's aviation sector. The Director General of the Security and Action Commission, Reverend Daniel Ogbami Tete, has assured that government will settle the claims of all affected depositors in the recent cleanup exercise of the financial sector. According to him, out of the 53 firms affected, his outfit has been able to fully access the records of 40 and is still working around the clock to access the records of a further seven in order to take them through the liquidation process. He said so far, liquidation orders have been granted to 22 fund managers and processes are in place to pay depositors their investment. In November last year, the SEC revoked the license of 53 fund managers for failing to settle investors' claims due to liquidity challenges while some were indicted for not operating in conformity with industry's best practices. This followed discussions with government and subsequently the appointment of the Registrar General as official liquidator to see to it that depositors whose funds were locked up in the cleanup exercise were duly paid the money they invested in these fund managers. Government has suspended the intended launch of an initial public offering of the Japan Minerals Royalties Limited. The Finance Ministry has explained that the move is to allow the Office of the Special Prosecutor ample time to conduct its corruption risk assessments regarding the transaction. The decision to hold the process comes on the back of calls by the OSP for more information on the deal which will inform the way forward as to its benefits to Ghana. The special prosecutor had in earlier letter to the Ministry of Finance indicated that information it had been furnished with was inadequate. It further urged the Ministry to abide by the results of the corruption risk assessment it is undertaking on the transaction before moving to the launching of the IPO transaction. In our last story, the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Yofi Grant, has hinted of plans by Boeing to establish an office in Ghana. According to the GIPC boss, the American multinational corporation is looking forward to having an establishment in Ghana to service planes in the sub-region as well as Africa as a whole. Speaking to Ghana Web on the sidelines of the IES dialogue with the new patriotic party on Thursday, the GIPC boss said, Boeing has already engaged Ghana on plans to set up in the country. During your presentation, you also mentioned of Boeing. Uh, are they looking to offer plans to set up in Ghana? Yes, we've had discussions of having um, an office in Ghana yeah. to uh, service planes in the sub-region and also for Africa. And uh, those discussions are ongoing. Definitely, there's a need of urgency considering how uh, clear we are about our own development agenda. But of course, you have to look at it in the framework of uh, all the regional covenants that you've signed. And although we're going ahead, we had to take a step back as we even negotiate our investment um, protocols under the CFTA and make sure that we are all in consonance and we do not have national laws that are trumped by other regional laws. That's it from me and the rest of the team here. But you can get more news on www.ganaweb.com. Also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and on Twitter at the Ghana Web and also subscribe to our YouTube channel Ghana Web TV. Thank you for watching. Have a pleasant weekend. My name is Desmond Frimpong.